right? I got to read my little prompt here. Pursuant to chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or telephone. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. And I apologize for any background noise that you all hear. My son has a couple of friends over for a little goodbye. And so there might be a, a little more noise than my usual <laughs> background. Um, so let's go over the agenda. So we um, are calling this meeting to order at 6.32. Um, so we'll do a welcome and we are do doing the review of the agenda. So next would be, public comment and then action and discussion items. And actually I'm going to, unless anybody has any objections to it, move action item A down to the last on our list. So we're going to start out with update on affordable housing listening session, update on HR bylaws review, update on uh, the state of human rights, update on reading a Fred Frederick Douglass speech, an update on community um, events group, and then talking about Latinx Heritage Month, and then the last item on our list would be um, nomination of chairs slash co-chairs. Then after that, we'll have another public comment, and then we can do some uh, member report out, but does anybody have any announcements right now that they would just like to share any general announcements? Sometimes it's an event that's happening or something that you saw in town. Seeing no one. All right, then we shall go to public comment and I have not seen if there's anybody in the audience. Uh, Laverne is in the audience, if we could let her in. And then I guess that leaves us with no uh, no public comment, being that LeBron will be jumping onto our screens right now and there's no one else in the audience. So we will go to an update on affordable housing listening sessions. So the update there, if you all recall, we had a June uh, listening session with um, various community members. And through that, there was um, communities of various parts of the town. So town councilors, uh, people on, Planning Board, Affordable Housing Trust, the, um, I forget what is the other um, trust in town that deals with housing, people from Craigsdor, unhoused population people, and as well as just um, town residents and grad students from um, UMass. And so through that, the listening session that was conducted, we broke up into groups and discussed kind of the various issues that people face when it comes to affordable housing in the town of Amherst. And through that, there is going to be a report being written. Um, Liz Haygood, who was also on the commission, um, was in partnership with me doing that. So I, she will be taking the reins from on that from this committee, along with that focus group committee that had um, the other um, committees that we had. So it was CSSJC, the Affordable Housing Trust, the Board of Health, and then the Human Rights Commission that we um, all got together as four committees. So she will be doing that. And I think she might be reaching out to the various groups as a whole to see if anybody would like to help summarize their report. I know that it's difficult to jump into a project when something has already been done, but the notes are being compiled with the Affordable Housing Trust. And then it will go out into kind of a general doc as to how then to proceed to move it to town council to make a report recommendations to town council because the overall goal is that we have made a way to listen into the community and through the affordable housing trust they basically said that this was the most fruitful conversation that they've had around affordable housing and so it's a very difficult topic to get people to talk about so in partnership with that night we had 40 plus people in the room and we had about 20 plus online um surveys that are well questionnaires that were filled out through various people so overall 60 residents um, participated in this 
So other than that, um, that is being done. I will say that uh, summer has gotten the better of us all. And so a little bit of vacation time has gotten into the way there of moving that project forward. But I, I imagine in the next week or two, there's going to be a meeting with Liz in that group and um, it should be back on track. Does anybody have any questions for that? No? All right, then we will move to the update on the human rights bylaw review. Uh, Pamela, can you give that one? Yeah, so I um, don't have very much to report. I did uh, ask Paul if there's been any movement, um, but I sent that um, email to him late this afternoon and I did not hear back from him. So at the last meeting, I think I just reported that I had passed on the revisions to him to Paul, the process is that he will review them and then make uh, recommendations to um, the uh, town council. And then they would have conversations with, I mean, and I should say town general council. So town legal council, not town council. Um, and then they would go to the uh, town council um, once they've gone through that process. And, um, I don't have an update on whether there's been any conversation between Paul and legal counsel, just to be clear about that. Got it. And it's my understanding that uh, general counsel is meeting with town counsel too for other bylaw revisions and stuff. So it kind of will flow with the overall charter and general bylaws of the town. Is that the idea of it? I think so. So I know that in addition to um, the HRC bylaw revisions, there were a couple of other boards that also had revisions. So it would, I'm sure that conversation will be one large conversation about all of the revisions for the town as a whole. Um, but I don't, you know, I have no idea whether the, those conversations have started or whether they've sent, when I sent my information to Paul, I believe that I also sent it uh, to our legal counsel, which is KP Law Firm as well. Um, but uh, KP uh, represents probably two thirds of the cities and towns in Massachusetts. So they're very, very busy. And I right. have not received, uh, I don't, I'm not even sure if I've received an acknowledgement that Lauren um, received the my email. I'm sure, I'm sure it got to her, but where we are on the list, I have no idea. Got it. I will say that uh, if we could put a plug in the adjusting, uh, existing agenda items just to review this at every meeting, because I my fear is that it's going to be election year and that this cycle then is going to get busy. And I, I would hate for this to then be talked about still in July of next year, like, oh, we're, we're going to work on that because everybody else kind of got a little bit busy. So if we can just have it in there so that way hopefully can be pushed through. Ronnie, you have your hand up. Uh, yeah, I'm just wondering, of course we can keep it going on the agenda, but I'm wondering if there's anything we could do outside this particular commission to sort of push it along to have it looked at. Because I know there is a lot going on, but on the other hand, we're part of, we should be part of the lot that's going on. Mm -hmm. So if we don't even get an acknowledgement from the law firm, and the town managers had it for a month, it seems like there could be some side urging that we could do to get it moving. And I'm wondering what that is. So I, um, I mean, I fought myself for reaching out to Paul late this afternoon. I think if I had reached out to him earlier, I would have gotten a response back from him about where it is. But um, in between the time that I emailed him and this evening, and I just looked on my email to see if he would respond it back. He had not. Uh, so I'm happy to follow up with him and uh, and then share the results of that and you know conversation with the group. So it may be that they might be further along than I you know than I know. I don't I just don't have any any information. And then you could make a decision about you know what sort of other fires or nudges you want to make at that time. Does anybody else have any other comments for the bylaw review?
Not seeing any hands up, then we're going to move to the update on the state of the human rights. So I think I shared with you all last time that I shared the um, state of the human rights that we voted into um, and signed off on and all agreed upon. I so I sent that to town council as well as to a local newspaper, the Amherst Indies. So I believe that in my understanding, I did not attend uh, the town council meeting, but the review that I did of the meeting that they did have on Monday, it did not seem to be talked about. So I think that it's very heartening and uh, discouraging that, you know, we, we sent that over and I did make it very clear in my email to that I would like that on their agenda to at the very least be put in the packet and acknowledged on the 17th of um, July and so. I, um, yeah, I, I, I don't know where to go from that, Pamela. So I can provide a little bit of an update on, on that just because of the conversation um, I was able to have with uh, Paul and, um, and Lynn Griesmer today. So I think, um, and please don't quote me uh, um, or hold me to this 100% because I, I don't know all of the town's um, bylaws, uh, you know, um, 100%, but I think the HRC, and there are at least two or three other um, boards of committees that have in their bylaw um, a mandate to provide a report to the town council. And um, what was under discussion today is how to proceed with those reports. So rather than having a conversation with just the HRC, I think there will be a conversation with all of the committees that are asked to do an annual report. And I don't know the status of, of whether they're all in, but I know that, they're, um, that they are, are thinking about how best to proceed with all of the reports that are supposed to come in. So I do think it's unfortunate that they didn't um, have an opportunity to do that at the last meeting, but the certainly it was received and it's just a matter of like, you know, how are they going to package all of the reports that, that are coming in together? So in addition to you, this report, there's a final, I know that there's a final report for the African Heritage Reparation Assembly, and they've actually, they've extended their time a little bit and they're scheduled to be, um, I think on the town council, agenda, I want to say for August, but it could be September. So it may be that all of the reports will be um, discussed at that time. But I, I know that there are that they certainly Lynn and the town council has received it and they're aware of it. Right. Yeah. And I mean, I know that they have received it too, because they sent that email um, receipt or recipient, like whatever re receipt. It just to your point, it is a little, you know, if there's not a best practice, why not go with a uh, practice that then can be, like I said, at, at the very least, put it on the agenda, because I mean, what is it going to do? It's, it's, I understand that they they could talk about it, they could do whatever they want with it, and just more is like, you know, we, we want our town committees to do this work, and I think this is the frustration with many town committees from various people that I talk about, is that it feels like we do all this work and it's volunteer work and yet we are not received in a way that you know you get acknowledged or you kind of feel like you're being pushed off or you're getting to a point to where you're not being heard like I will give the example of um, when CSSJC sends something to town council it does not seem that a receipt a received receipt is even sent in an email as opposed to when I send something from the HRC and I think that those practices need to really be looked at from a uh, best practice for the town. You know, it, it very much feels like favoritism and whoever has the uh, town council's ear on what they're going to do. So I, I, I understand that Lynn and Paul are, are going through it and would like to proceed in a way that's a uniform way, but if there's not a uniform way, why not acknowledge that? <laughs> it's, a, it's a simple email would be like, hey, I, I, I know you're asking for us to be uh, discussed on the 17th. We're probably not gonna do that because of X, Y, and Z. And then I could have reported that. Yeah, that I obviously can't respond yes. to because I yep. don't have a, I don't have any answer for, <laughs> yeah, for that. Yeah, I, I understand. I'm just stating yeah. it publicly while we're being recorded. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Anybody have uh, any comments for 
uh, the state of human rights. Philip, we're just gonna miss you so much. <laughs> All right, not seeing anybody else's hands go up for state of human rights discussion. Next is update on the reading of Frederick Douglass speech and uh, many people were there. So please someone else speak. I wanna jump in. I found it really moving. And what I would love for next year is if somebody emailed me um, a little advertisement that was Facebook ready so I could put it up on my social media. And I bet other people would too, because we were just, uh, I guess, speeching <laughs> since we were reading the speech to the choir, right? To ourselves. And um, what an amazing opportunity to educate people. and. Uh, yeah, so I would have loved to have done outreach and maybe get 10 or 20 people there just from myself, you know, and then each, if each of us could do that. But I don't know if that's the uh, intention. So I thought it was great. Well, I think your intention is, or your understanding of the intention is completely correct to get the more people that are able to hear and read it. I think the more power it brings. Ronnie? Yeah, I was definitely educated. I also found the size of the group, I know we want to reach more people, but I found the size of the group to be nice. It felt sort of warm and comfy, all of us sitting in chairs in a circle on the green. Um, yeah, and I agree, I think more people should hear it. Uh, I had not heard it before, having not had that early part of my education in this country, but so I was really moved, really, really moved in a big way. It was a very powerful speech. And I was told that all the, every American kid knows what this is going through the American school system. But I don't believe it somehow. It's so powerful. And I've been here. I mean, I am, of course, an immigrant, but I have never heard this before. So I, I, I really, uh, yeah. I found it to be a great, great success and everybody was listening and even whether you spoke or not, people were thinking and it was just nice to be together with people I wouldn't have normally be sitting together with. Yeah, uh, definitely. And uh, I don't know who you talked to, but as someone that went through the U.S. Uh, school system, I can tell you that I did not hear of this speech until uh, couple of years ago when I joined the Human Rights Commission. So it, I don't think it is very uh, well known in broader ways. I think some people know about it, but not many, I guess. Anybody else? Yeah, so I, I mean, I think we're hitting the um, into the next topic, but yeah, advertisement, I, I, I feel like that is, something and it is not a knock or a ding on anyone. I think it's just a reality of putting on an event, right? As you know, you have to have the flyer out way beforehand. You have to then social media post to make more advertisement in a way to then draw in people. I think that that kind of is the next uh, step here for the group. You know, we started doing these more events. Now it's now, how do we grow the events? What can we do to make the events um, go into a broader reach of people. I will say that uh, there was two individuals there that I spoke to that day that uh, they were quite new to town. They literally had just arrived a week of, ago or a month ago is what um, they said. So something is working. I don't know. <laughs> that, that seems very uh, like you came to town and you found out that there was an event happening and you showed up. So great. So something's working. But obviously uh, there are many residents in town that did not show up that day and for whatever reason. And, you know, maybe just having that little pocket of, like you said, Deb, of um, pulling our own community and our own networks of people. Because I do I will say that I am guilty of that. Sometimes I forget and I just assume that people know of events and then I'm like, oh wait, no, you should come to this. Like, yeah, like we talk all the time, but we never talked about this event that's coming up literally around the corner. So definitely. Deb? Yeah, so um, <clears throat> I'm wondering if this is something that we could have a template, like a social media template. I, I use Canva a lot at work and they have, um, 
yeah, templates, they, they'll give you a size, right? This is good for a Facebook post or, you know, an Instagram post. And then just, we can feed in the new information, you know, the new event, and it's not a big deal. It's not difficult to do. I'm just wondering if that's something that's on, uh, considered to be staff's job or if we're supposed to do that or, yeah. Yep, Pamela, do you wanna? Yeah, so I actually think in um, that it has been a combination of both staff and commission. Um, and uh, one of the things that Jennifer, Jennifer and I are hoping to do this summer is to sort of standardize some procedures, including like a cultural events calendar so that we're not planning dates a month and a half out, but really have a calendar that's set for the in, entire year. Um, we have a UMass graduate student who's working with us on putting some of those things together. Um, and she'll have to have a conversation with uh, Brianna Sundrit, the communications director, about you know, what the protocols are for the town. Because the town actually does, as you would expect, have some specific protocols that they use for publicity of town events. Um, and then um, I think actually the the HRC has a Facebook account, but that account had, was created by Jennifer as a private ac account and doesn't follow the town um, uh, model. And so, I mean, there's some things that need to be worked out, but I, I agree with you having some standards about uh, advertising would be helpful. I think it'll be really helpful if we are able to I won't even use the word finalize, but if we could um, really sketch out a very good draft of what our, our calendar will be. The, the next big event is Latinx Heritage Month. So hopefully several weeks, months prior to that, we'll have a full schedule. So the cultural events start with Latinx Heritage Month and end with really with Juneteenth. Um, and I think there's some hard decisions to be made about the cultural events because there are a large number of them, and um, what well, I, you know, I like everyone else. I really enjoyed the Frederick Douglass reading, but I, I'm going to say that I would be in favor of going back to the former model, uh, which is having that reading done on Juneteenth as opposed to July 5th, just because we need to re reduce the number of events that we hold. Right, we need to hold really good events and do them really well rather than a lot not not to I'm not, I'm not saying the other ones weren't done well but you know we we need to be mindful of what our resources are both for staffing and for time and for money yeah. and so if we are if we're able to do that I think it will uh, it'll be better for everybody just to, um and then the other thing that and I I can't recall now everything is a big blur um, cause I've been doing workshops all week, um, whether at the last meeting we talked about the notion of this community cultural events group, was that raised at the last? So, um, Jen's been out this week, unfortunately, so we haven't really moved forward on that other than I have a couple of names of individuals that I think would be, uh, um, good to invite who are not currently members of boards, um, on the town, um, but I, I do think that if we are able to pull together a cultural events group that's sort of a working group and it is diverse coming from all of the different racial and ethnic and other groups on, on town to really map out what the programming looks like for the year, it will have a number of benefits, right? So that we're not just targeting the one group whose events that we're doing at that time, and there's an opportunity for people to hear about all of the events and share as you plan to do with your networks. Um, so that's the hope um, to get that up and running before uh, Latinx Heritage Month. Yeah, that would, that would be good. Deborah. That all sounds absolutely fantastic. And I like the idea of doing the Frederick, Frederick Douglass speech on Juneteenth. If, especially if there's four, three or 400 people there to listen to it. I think that's very exciting, but you reminded me. So after Juneteenth, I saw that there was an event at the Mill River 
on Juneteenth. And I was like, well, who put that on? And was it at the same time? I didn't even get, you know, the specs on what time it was and like, how come I didn't hear about that? And so not only <laughs> truncating our own calendar, but coordinating, like we're too small a town personally, mm-hmm. I think, yeah. to have two events on the same day for the same purpose. Right. So we, there were three events, actually four events over the course of the weekend. So there was a film and discussion um, at Amherst Cinema. There was an event on the Saturday. I can't. Yeah, I think on the either the Saturday or the Sunday with Ancestral Bridges. There was a town event. And then there was uh, um, an event on Juneteenth um, sponsored by the Black Business um, Association of the Amherst area. I I get their acronym. You said it right. Right. Um, so and that, again, I think is one reason why we need a group that's not a formal, you know, boarding committee, but to have some coordination. Like, I actually like the idea of having a variety of events um, over the course of the weekend, because people can choose which ones, you know, they are attracted to, or, you know, I'm really into film, so I'm just going to go that to that one, or I'd like the historical tour, so I'll do that. But yeah, better coordination um, and collaboration would be a benefit. Um, and if we were, you, you know, if we could agree to publicize all of the events as well. So some of those events got um, publicized on the town website, but, you know, I think we, we should be consistent about trying to get all of those events um, um, you know, onto the town website. So another, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, uh, multiple events is great. It was just that the Mill River event was the same day. And it was, Mm -hmm. because it was business association, it was like, I intentionally went to the one on the commons in order to support black businesses. And then when I found out afterwards that there was this other event for black businesses, I was like, oh no, (laughs) (laughs) my goal wasn't achieved, right? Because I didn't know this. Yeah, so it was a little, disappointing for me because I would have gone to both but having them Mm -hmm. the same day was rough and also not knowing yeah right right and there were a few folks who were able to attend both because the the um I believe the uh, the Mill River event was started at 10 and went until noon and then the town event started at noon and went until you know 4 30 or 5 so you're right it is possible I, I mean there were the, I wanted to go to the Mill River event because Dr. Shirley Whitaker was uh, signing, um, autographing books, and I wanted to get one for my granddaughter. I had to, I begged someone who was heading over there, like, here's money. Would you please buy a book and have it autographed <laughs> for me? Because I, you know, I could not go. I couldn't be in two places at one time, which is, you know, haven't figured that, that, that um, out yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that, um, oversight on these events is definitely like needed with the coordination the advertising and the to your point Deb uh we are a small enough town that we can very easily be like hey you're doing that event around the same time I am maybe we can coordinate in a way that everybody can go to both um anybody else have anything but while we are kind of jumping into the next agenda item so the the community events group uh ask Pamela has already said that it's in the works. I think that that would be a great and fruitful group. I do just want to say out loud that let's um, have diverse and inclusive uh, people in that group because I do feel like that is um, what sometimes some of these events can lack in for advertising and for having it be a part of it. So. Does anybody else have any other comments that they want to make about the new formation of the community events group? I am uh, interested to know what it can uh, officially or legally be called, Pamela. I know that there is (laughs) that hold up there for uh, whatever rule or law it is. Yeah, so I think that... um... So there, there are two questions and they're and they're separate. So the first is, I think that the um, the town manager create could create a group, um, at, like the community service working group, and we could just get started 
the so that question I think is easily resolved. And um, the second part of the um, is whether the group should be a friends of the HRC group, which would provide a legal status and a way for fundraising activities and donations to be made. And then um, I think it's now been about um, a week and a half ago, I, uh, there was um, a conversation and some information that was sent to Jennifer and I about uh, establishing a trust. Um, and I had some real concerns about uh, a trust. I don't. I don't know of. I. I. I guess I need to have a better standing of like how the affordable land trust works. Like, what is the legal relationship between a trust, which I've typically understood to be a private entity, and a municipal government? So you know, Deb, maybe we can get together <laughs> and and put our put our heads around that. And I haven't had a chance to look at the affordable house. Um, housing trust documents to know what that relationship is. There is a friends group for like the Friends of the Jones Library that is um, that uh, does fundraising and receives donations on behalf of the library. There's also some questions around um, like who would be in control of the funds. So you know, I played a little bit of devil's advocate and said, okay, so we create this trust and they are able to do this great fundraising. And right now everything is going really hunky-dory and we're all getting along. But if it's an independent um, entity, which I think it would be, at some point, if they wanna take the money and do something completely different with it, you know, what control would the, would the town have after we've done these fundraising for town events and then we don't have control of it. So I don't know the answers to those questions yet. That's that's the piece that needs to be worked out. But I think we could establish the group and start working together and doing those collaboration, the collaboration while those legal questions are, be, are being answered. Okay. Ronnie? Yeah, I, um, I mean, I don't know if a trust is the same as a 501c3. It may be different, but generally there's a board, there's a mission, there are all kinds of uh, principles that guide the operations of any kind of these kinds of entities. I don't know why necessarily the town would have to have control per se, which is what you said. Um, it seems to me it's really a community effort, largely carried out by volunteers with donations made by members of the community. Uh, so I'm not a lawyer and I don't know the legal stuff, but I have been associated with lots of nonprofits in different ways. And I know that you can't just do what you want with it. You know, there are rules around how you can spend the money and there are accountabilities. So I guess from my point of view, I don't worry so much, but I'm not the lawyer here. I mean, you probably know all the things that can happen that I don't. So I, 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 I think you're right. The question, and I just don't know the answer to, is what, what would be the legal relationship between, because a 501c3 nonprofit um, doesn't necessarily automatically have a relationship with a municipality or wouldn't, you know, necessarily, I'm sure the Friends of the Jones Library um, in their documents have some sort of uh, mission statement and and purpose that links them together, but I didn't want to um, to say I'm in favor of one um, process or another until I've looked at those documents. And I I don't know. I mean, I normally when I think about a 501c3 nonprofit or a trust, I think about independent entities that are not necessarily related to a municipality. And the goal for this group, whatever group we have, is to have the, the group be the fundraising arm um, for the municipality for these events. So we'd want that relationship to be, to be you know, a good and proper one under the state and federal laws. And um, I just haven't had a chance to, to really figure that piece out. Yeah.
Does anybody else have any other comments on the community events group? I think my last comment on it will be that it would be nice to have some HRC involvement being that uh, we have been the ones to put together this group. I think that that feels natural to have either someone from the HRC serve on it. I know that creates a dull serving, but it, it, I'm just putting that out there. And if I was staying, I would do it. <laughs> All right, uh, the next uh, item that we have is Latinx Heritage Month. So last year, what we did was it was meant to be on the common, but then it was in conflict with the cider run that happens in the fall. Um, so if the notes can just reflect to check the date on whenever the cider run is, so that way then we don't try and plan it on the common and um, start to use the common and then be denied because the common's already being used, that would be great. Um, last year we did it at Kendrick Park. So that's just uh, down the way there next to the circle or rotary um, that's on um, Triangle Street. And so there we had, we opened up with a uh, land acknowledgement and then uh, what you call it, some performances were done as well so we had i think probably five performers that day and um the kids from a local um i think it was Pelham elementary school and correct me if i'm wrong pamela but i believe it was them um they came and did um some dancing and then there was martha Rivera, who was all in the um schools who did some Fukuoka dancing with um, her group. So it was very well attended, well performances. And we also then got some food um, from various vendors in town that identify as Latinx and um, that we were able to do in partnership with um, Amherst College who gave us a donation to um, source out that food and sponsored food. I think that's kind of where the Amherst College uh, partnership with HRC kind of began, began was with that event. And Victor, you helped plan that event. Am I missing anything? I know that was almost a year ago. Yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah, uh, yeah I feel like the only other thing that I'd only comment on is just, it was, everything was really well. I mean, I, I couldn't attend because of a family emergency, but um, I, there was nothing that anybody you know kind of gave me advice about it. it was more just like oh like thank you for opening up this opportunity especially it being a town acknowledgement um it's i think the only thing was that i felt like some of the younger performers felt a little um not necessarily like maybe not like rushed but like in a way where i feel like they wanted a little bit more notice about the event mm -hmm. but um uh, i think they enjoyed the opportunity. I didn't get any, you know, any, you know, like anything bad from it. It was just that maybe just like giving them a heads, a heads up, like before we actually need them, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, that makes total sense. As performers putting it on your calendar that you're going to be performing makes a uh, complete sense. Uh, yeah. So I, or Victor is referring to we had um bomba some bomba kids from the high school that um, we were looking to possibly incorporate in the event, but I, I believe it was short notice on their end. So if we could possibly reach out sooner, I think having that youth involvement is great um, with that. And Victor, if you have any contacts there, if you wanna share them with Pamela and Jen, that would be great. Um, and yeah, to Victor's point of, um, just identifying as Latinx and someone in town. I, I had many people and many contacts come up to me afterwards and just say how amazing it was to have an event where our community didn't need to put together or scramble and fund and do that. It was nice just to attend an event that the town was putting on and not have to set up any tables or clean anything. It was just very nice on their end. So I think that that's, these community events really highlight that in every um, culture and every heritage that we do 
highlight is that that's the general feedback that I receive is that, wow, this is so great. The town is acknowledging like my heritage, my culture, and I didn't have to do anything other than just show up and enjoy it. Deb? Um, yeah, I just um, want to give a heads up that there are three weeks of uh, the most um, important Jewish holidays starting on September 16th. So they're all happening within that month. And it would be wonderful if there's only one event, if it wasn't on one of those holy days. And if there's multiple events, then, you know, so be it. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, that's, that's great. Thank you for putting that out there. So um, I'll take a look at the calendar. I've already in um, planning something for my um, for my house running up against the 16th of September, which I know is Rosh Hashanah. So, um, um, but and last year we ended up with a date in October, like the last day right. of the Latinx Heritage Month. So I'll look at the calendar to see, make sure. That we can avoid it and the event was on a saturday yeah um so yeah i, I will i just wrote a note to myself to talk to um I, athena hasn't been in but i can talk to um angela to take a look at the uh calendar for the common to see make sure that we get on to the calendar right yeah i think that yeah. So the, yeah. the other issue is, is that I think the farmer's market is also running until then. And so Saturdays became difficult. So Sundays were really the only option. And then, yeah, so yeah. or Saturday later in the day after the farmer's market. market yeah. Although I will say, uh, I think this town does need to look into the use of the common uh, during farmer's markets and culture events, because I do know that the powwow um, that was put on in May also had that conflict and it is unfortunate that we have to move that then to an off-site of the high school um, mm -hmm. because the farmer market seems to be taking precedent over these events. Yeah I think the um, new space that is uh, designed for um, I guess that's North Common mm -hmm. um, will, um, will provide both some performance space and will allow for events to occur at the same time. So we'll lose that parking lot, but then we'll get another park-like area. Um, and I'm not sure, I think at one time there was an amphitheater design in, uh, I'm not sure that that amphitheater um, is still part of the design, but it does provide another space um, on the town, town common to have events, so. So I think with uh, this discussion, I just kind of wanted to give that little bit of a background, but if we could have possibly some members commit to helping with the Latinx Heritage Month, just in case this community events group isn't up and running, um, that would be probably useful. Am I correct in assuming that, Pamela? No. Yeah, so I would, I would um, go a step further and say that the, I hope that we have the community events group up and running, but there would still be an expectation that members of the HRC would be participating because these events are primarily um, sponsored by this group. So I think having more hands, you know, uh, many hands make for light work. <laughs> and, yes. um, and there have typically been, you know, like a core group of people who've shown up at the events and the more we're able to add to that, the better it will be for, for everyone. Ronnie? I just want to express that having not been as actively participating as I might have in these events uh, during the last whatever months that I've known about them, one of the problems really has been scheduling for me. And having that annual calendar, it would make such a big difference. Such a big difference. I mean, I was just out of town through much of it or had other commitments. So I'm assuming it will be the same for the others. It will be easier to participate if we can anticipate and no one will be here and when we won't. Right. Yeah, so the Latinx Heritage Month will be running from, is it the 15th or the 16th? When does it start? 
one of those days. Google said the fifth. The fifteenth. Okay, and then yeah, the fifth. I get confused because Mexican Independence Day is the sixteenth, so my mind goes one of these days is important, but I guess both of those days are the the important dates there. So uh, September fifteenth through uh, October fifteenth is um, the time frame that that runs through, and so there are one, two, three, four, five technically weekends that could be a possible ability. For that and I will say that being um, in charge of the event to Ronnie you get to kind of plan what uh, works best for you and as far as scheduling <laughs> that I've done that many times where I'm like I'm going to be out of town so if you all schedule it then someone else is doing it so then it usually gets moved um, around but yes if we could have possibly one person maybe that wants to jump at taking on Latinx Heritage Month with Jen and Pam. And I will say that a lot of the work is more just sitting down, discussing what the overall plan is. That would be great. And of course, if any member to Pamela's point can come the day of the event, that is super helpful. Anybody really wanna jump on Latinx Heritage Month? I just Remember want to say the, the juxtaposition with my holy days makes it difficult for me to take leadership, but... Um... And so I'm sorry about that, but I'll jump on whatever the next one is. Yeah, I mean, I loved the youth, whatever day that was that I was there. It just was an experience like I've never had before in my life. So for me, it depends on when it is. I really have to know, but I would jump in. I'll be there regardless, as long as I'm available. I don't need to be the point person. Maybe somebody else can jump in for that. but. It's yeah. really hard to do that without. Oh, I was going to say that I would be happy to join any email um, chain that it happens. I, I know everyone has things going on. Um, it's going to be a difficult semester just because it'll be junior, first semester of junior for me. So a little nervous, but um, I'm happy to help with labor or um, forwarding emails doing anything like that or um, attending any sort of meetings, um, I'd be happy to offer any kind of volunteering in that, of that sort. All right. Jacinta, correct me if I'm wrong, do you speak Spanish? Um, yeah. I'm a Spanish major and I can speak Spanish, <laughs> not the best. Right, um, right, right. Ethnically, I'm not Hispanic Latino. So. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. I was just more wondering about language. Yeah, my, my name is super deceiving too. It's <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Pamela, it seems like uh, Jacinta is someone that you could possibly reach out to for, for this and all right. Yeah, I mean, so, um, you know, Jen and I will definitely get the ball rolling and we'll um, report back. And, um, and I do think as everyone has pointed out, like having a calendar, an annual calendar will make it much easier for folks to commit, right? Because you know what you're committing um, to, um, so. And we hope to have that calendar in place before this well and um, done well before this event and sort of firmed up. We've been working on it. So if you, uh, I could give, I could send out to the group sort of like what we put together thus far, like the ideal dates for, or, uh, you know, looking at the dates that we've had um, events traditionally in town. But I think. Um, rather than scare you because it's a long list, <laughs> um, that once she's back in and we're able to um, make some decisions about which ones we're going to try to highlight uh, for the next year, it will seem more manageable. And I, I will also say this, there are always going to be additions to the calendar. So we've already received a request, and I think we might have shared this already, um, to uh, include in our calendar for next year a marriage equality celebration. So it would be the 20th anniversary of the Goodrich decision 
um, here in Massachusetts. And, and we will, you know, delighted to take that on, but that means making some other decisions about other about other things. So yeah. Right. Oh, that is great. Any other discussion on Latinx Heritage Month? Not seeing any hands up. So then we go to our last action item here that um, it's going to make me a little bit sad to, to leave you all. But uh, as my departure goes, the uh, seat for co-chair opens up. And so I think that it would be beneficial tonight to nominate and vote someone into co-chair. So what we've done in the past is um, someone nominate someone and you can either accept the nomination or decline the nomination, depending on how you would like to go about that. And then as a whole of a group, we vote yay or nay on that person and then you are voted in as co-chair. So with that being said, is there any nominations? Uh, Tyler? I'd like to nominate Ronnie Parker. Do we have a second? I'll second. Awesome. Any other nominations? Not seeing any other nominations and I'm going to roll call. And so you're voting yes or well, actually, sorry, Ronnie, <laughs> are, you, are you accepting that nomination? <laughs> Should I ask a question? Where's the other co-chair? Is that other co-chair going? I haven't been here long enough to really know. Is that other co-chair going to be there? My understanding yes. is that, uh, is that he, yes? his plan is to, yes, still be a part of the co-chair, but I that is my only understanding of it. Okay. And the only reason why then, he is not here tonight. I accept. Okay, awesome. If he's with there, that, yes, he's not with that next... disappearing at the end. Yes, <laughs> with that exception, then uh, I'm going to do a roll call vote. So your vote yes is to, for yes for Ronnie Parker to be the active co-chair of the Human Rights Commission for the town of Amherst. So I'm just going to call you as I see you on my screen. Deb? Absolutely, yes. Jacinta? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Laverne? Yes. Victor? Victor, are you with us? Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I am a yes, and Ronnie? Yes, and thank you, thank you Tyler. I'm heard. Yes. Well, congratulations, Hello. Ronnie. Thank you so much for taking on. This role, I, I know that you, that you will lead this group in a great way. With that being said, that is- Don't, uh, don't expect, I'll just make one more comment. Don't expect any filling up shoes or stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> I know the big shoes are walking away to California. So <laughs> the uh, issues, however, are very important. So I'm really, as I said, been happy to work with this group. Thank you. Yes. Thank you for those kind words, Ronnie. That is the end of our action and discussion um, items. So we will go to reports, any HRC member reports. What are reports specifically? Yep, so reports usually are if, um, so we have a liaison who is not here right now. Um, she is officiating a track uh, final to hopefully get a part of um, her goal to one day do um, the track meet at the Olympics. But so she is um, our liaison for the Affordable Housing Trust. So she would give that report. I. Uh, am slash was, depending on how you want to look at that in the next couple minutes, um, was the liaison for the Community Safety and Social Justice Committee, and as well as any other reports. So if you went to a town council meeting and heard something, you went to a, um, I know there's various groups in towns, and if like, if anything is relevant, say 
in your particular situation of Amherst College that you would like to report out. It's mainly a report to say like, hey, this issue has come up and the Human Rights Commission should have their eyes on it. Did that answer your question, hopefully? Yes. All right, awesome. As far as the CSSJC, um, all, the only report that I have is that if you know anybody that is looking to join a town committee and you think that they are the right fit for CSSJC, please, um, ask them to fill out the interest form that is online, like we all did to join the HRC because they are now officially under quorum with my resignation from that group uh, last Wednesday. And so being under quorum is, um, as this group has experienced, I don't think anybody on this committee has experienced it. it. It can be challenging in that you basically cannot do any actionable items. And it feels like you are just attending a meeting just to attend a meeting. And I think we can all agree that that's not what we signed up for. <laughs> so if you know anybody that is looking to be a part of CSSJC, please encourage them to apply. Does anybody else have any other member reports? Not seeing anything, then we will have our last public comment of the night, but I'm not sure that there's anybody in the public. So no one is going to raise their hand there. And then I will say that, oh, go ahead, Jacinta. Yeah, I guess I didn't want to say this in the member report <laughs> section, but if we're in the public comment, I don't know if anybody is interested, but um, I'm here on campus doing the Mellon Main Summer Institute. And so in this program, it's supposed to be um, students from um, underrepresented marginalized backgrounds, um, both racially, ethnically, or um, systematically, economically, um, first-gen students. So that's kind of the students that make up this uh, research position. Um, and we're having a colloquium, which is basically where we present our research for 10 minutes um, and then take questions for five. Uh, there's about nine of us. I think we're starting. We don't have the specific time, but um, we were thinking of starting at 1 p.m next Wednesday, which I think is July 26th, yeah. Um, but I can send an email to somebody if anybody's interested in attending or, um, I don't think we'll have a live Zoom, <laughs> but if you are interested, um, me and a couple other people will be, will be presenting on um, a spectrum of topics. So I'm doing Latin American studies, um, art history. I know someone's doing a project on queer studies and ballroom culture. Um, and I have another person who's doing something really specific and niche on um, radio media studies. Um, so it's it's really interesting and compelling. And if you and if you want to come listen to our presentations, you're all welcome. Um, and so yeah, that's something I wanted to human rights related maybe. Yeah. Oh totally, yeah, it's it's definitely worth mentioning at this group. Thank you for sharing Pamela. So first of all, Rosemary is a good friend of mine because <laughs> I was the MM um, LMA's undergraduate fellowship director for Smith College when I worked there. And um, I've already uh, had talked with her about attending. So if you send the information to me, I will send it out to the entire group. So yeah. Oh, awesome. Thank you, Pamela. Mm -hmm. All right, any other items that anybody would like to talk about? Not seeing anything. All right. Well, with that, everybody, it has been a pleasure serving on this commission. I really enjoyed all my time that um, I spent in this commission and really helped grow and help make it become a, a, a powerhouse in town. And so I know that all of you individually bring your own self and your own importance into this commission. And please don't ever feel like you cannot speak up. This commission has given me a voice that I don't think that I knew that I had. And so I hope that you all find your own individual parts in this commission. And I hope that all these fruitful conversations that we've had throughout our time can prosper into the human rights work that this town desperately needs. Maybe so. Thank you. Thank you, Philip, and safe transitions and don't leave us.
log in. We'll be looking for you. Yes. So Thanks, Philip, and uh, yeah, enjoy California. Uh, before all of the goodbyes, uh, set the next uh, meeting uh, date. That should be the third, the third yeah. Wednesday. Yep. Yeah, just I'm just saying publicly so people will be reminded. Got it. So the next meeting time will be the third Wednesday of August, which is August 16th at 6:30. Thank you. Well, Thanks. I feel like Liz, like I'm going to put up barriers <laughs> <laughs> to misdirect you. So your truck just circles around and Amherst. Um, it has definitely been a pleasure. And, um, you know, like everyone here, we will certainly miss your leadership and your hands-on approach to doing this, like everything that was needed. And um, so, yeah, so our loss is certainly your community's gain. And I was thinking today, like, you know, I'm at some point in, uh, I think I'll be like, I knew him when, you know, because there is a really big stage ahead for you if you decide to choose choose it, you know, um, both, you know, locally, nationally, if that's your choice, you, it would, I could definitely see you taking on that if, if that's your choice. So best wishes always. Thank you, everybody. And don't feel like you can't uh, reach me via email. You all have my email. Tonight, I will be sending out my official resignation, so I will no longer be on uh, this commission. But uh, please, if you need anything, send me an email. All right. And with that, everybody, my time at the Human Rights Commission comes to an end on this day at 733. Meeting adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Good night.